Hi, my name is Chris Bull, and I am the Products Technical Support Manager for the Products Division at Sikasui Xenotech. And today I'm going to be talking about hepatocyte test systems and describing which ones are useful for your research. Before I go into more detail about which test system is best suited for your work, I want to go through some background and a few definitions that are commonly used when talking about these types of cells. The liver is a multifunctioned organ, and many of those biochemical pathways are essential for life on the organismal level. Hepatocytes are the functional parenchymal cell of the liver, and for ADME DMPK scientists, they are important because they metabolize xenobiotic compounds and detoxify the body. Functions that are essential in preclinical drug development. Volume-wise, they make up about 80% of the liver's volume, but only represent approximately 60% of the total cell population, which basically means they're big. And because of their size and other physical properties, we can take advantage of these characteristics and purify them away from other cell types in the liver. So why use hepatocytes instead of hepatic subcellular fractions? Primary hepatocytes are considered the gold standard for ADME DMPK work because they are the most representative test system. They are the cells with the enzymatic activities that are the most interesting and have the most impact on drug development work. Because they are living, they still contain biochemical pathways that cannot be replicated with subcellular fractions, and the activities are not enriched like they are with microsomes, making them more representative and offer a more complete view of what could happen in vivo. In addition to that, there are certain assays where regulatory agencies require the use of hepatocytes. For instance, induction assays can't be done in subcellular fractions. Even though hepatocytes are the gold standard for ADME DMPK work, there are some things that, that you need to take into consideration when using hepatocytes over subcellular fractions. Cells from some particular donors can be limiting. They generally cost more, and hepatocytes require more refined handling techniques than sub subcellular fractions. But I don't want to deter you from using hepatocytes because we have a steady source of donor tissue from which we can isolate hepatocytes and we can train you in the techniques needed for successful hepatocyte experiments. So now that I have given a little bit of background of why hepatocytes are important, I want to go through and define the different hepatocyte formats, as hepatocytes are not a one-size-fits-all test system, and some types of hepatocytes are not appropriate for all assays. At the most basic level, hepatocytes can be differentiated between primary hepatocytes and immortalized hepatocytes. Primary hepatocytes are unmodified, terminally differentiated, and they are isolated from living tissue. They do not proliferate in culture, and they are representative of the donor that they are isolated from. And they also have a very finite time in culture. Whereas immortalized hepatocytes have undergone purposeful or spontaneous genetic modifications that lead to uncoupled growth characteristics. They, re they resist senescence and cellular death. They proliferate in culture. However, immortalized hepatocytes, much like stem cells, can't fully replicate the phenotypes that are found in primary hepatocytes, but they can still be very useful for certain assays. Another major differentiation between test systems is freshly isolated, never frozen hepatocytes, and cryopreserved hepatocytes. Fresh hepatocytes have to be used shortly after isolation from the tissue. They can be used in suspension or plated formats, and they are an accepted test system by the regulatory agencies, but they need to be used relatively quickly as they become available. Uh, and if ordering them, you may not have access to all the donor's medical history during the ordering time window. And you certainly won't have access to donor-dependent enzymatic activities. Cryopreserved hepatocytes are carefully frozen to maintain stable enzymatic activity while being able to, to be stored long-term. And this allows the cells to be used on your timetable and they can be had in multiple formats. Because we can use the cells at any time, we fully characterize the cells for various characteristics such as post-law viability, phase one and phase two activities, uh, in some instances uptake, fold induction, optimal plating densities. Uh, we also give micrographs of the monolayers. And in some products, we also offer the intrinsic clearance rates for select SIPs. Uh, and these are also an accepted test system by the field and regulatory agencies. Another major differentiation between test systems is the species in which the hepatocytes are sourced from. Humans versus small animal model hepatocytes. Animal primary hepatocytes are useful for the same reason animal subcellular fractions are useful in that they allow for species comparisons with human test systems. For instance, in the cyano monkey, the SD rat, the CD1 mouse, and beagle dog are very common small animal models uh, for comparison with humans. 
These will help scientists choose the appropriate small animal models for in vivo work, and they generally have good, if not better, availability than human. Uh, and there's a significant cost difference. While animal hepatocytes are very useful and some advantages over human hepatocytes, the human hepatocytes are still the most relevant and the accepted test system of regulatory agencies for certain assays like SIP induction assays. As we drill down further and get past the more intuitive choices with primary hepatocytes, I want to explain the various formats a little bit more because it's at this point where the choice in hepatocytes can make or break an experiment because not all hepatocyte formats are suited for all assays. Suspension cultures are hepatocytes that will not attach to a surface, will not form a confluent monolayer on collagen-coated plates. Because the suspension hepatocytes won't attach and they stay up in suspension in the media, they have a useful incubation time of four to six hours as the viability and activity of the cells will drop over time due to anawikis. But they make a perfect test system for short incubations at a lower price point because you use less medium, you don't have to purchase special plates, and these experiments are completed in shorter time frames. Platable hepatocytes will attach to collagen-coated surfaces, flatten, form a monolayer with coverage of greater than 80% of the surface, and the monolayer is maintained for at least five days in culture. The last format choice is whether to use individual donor hepatocytes or pooled donor hepatocytes. The individual donor hepatocytes are pretty self-explanatory, and the pooled donor hepatocytes are a mixture of the individual donor hepatocytes in the same vial. The number of donors in the pool can vary between products, but it can range between three donors all the way up to 100 donors. Now that we have a better understanding of the various hepatocyte test systems, let's talk about who uses them and how you should choose which hepatocyte test system will best suit your needs. A lot of different groups use hepatocytes, especially in the drug development field. Uh, the screening discovery groups, R&D, ADME DMPK groups, and academics. Their uses vary quite a bit from drug development and safety, all the way to pathogen host interactions and to general biology, biochemistry. And now you should be able to see that there's a reoccurring theme going on here, and it's that not all hepatocyte test systems are appropriate for all assays. And to try and help you wade through these choices, we made a flow chart to help you narrow down which test system will work best for your experiments. Now this, this flow chart isn't all encompassing, but if you have a question, you know, please feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email as we're always here to help. So in this flow chart, the first thing that needs to be cited is whether or not to use primary or mortalized cells. If you choose immortalized cells, there are various cell lines to choose from. But at Sekizui Xenotech, we have the FA2 and 4 cell line and the cells available from the JCRB cell library. Because immortalized cells don't quite replicate and represent the complete array of phenotypes found in the liver tissue or primary hepatic cells, they are limited in scope. However, that doesn't mean that they aren't useful for certain assays like lysosomal trapping, induction screening, or experiments that are focused on examining cell biology, biochemical pathways. If you choose primary hepatocytes, you can choose from freshly isolated cells or cryopreserved cells. The freshly isolated cells can be used in suspension or plated format, animal or human, but one thing to consider is that they have to be used right away and their experiments have to be ready to go when the cells come in. If you choose cryopreserved cells, you have the convenience to use them when it's best for you in your lab. And you can choose a lots based on characterization assays that aren't always known at the time that you have to place your uh, order for fresh cells. And they have been an accepted test system for quite some time. The next thing you need to choose between is the animal hepatocytes or human hepatocytes, and whether you need individual donor hepatocytes or pooled hepatocytes. This choice is really only for human hepatocytes as all the small animal model hepatocytes come standard as pools. Basically, unless you're doing experiments that require the use of individual donors, like SIP induction assays, or perhaps examining the contribution of specific SIPs and their effects on an observed phenotype, pools will probably be your most useful for your work. The final choice will be between suspension hepatocytes and platable hepatocytes. And this choice is based on what assays you intend to use the cells for and what endpoints you're looking at. Suspension are most suited for shorter, four to six hour incubations and are useful for screening, uh, metabolic stability, and metabolite identification, SIP inhibition, and uptake assays. Plated hepatocytes are required for SIP induction assays, efflux assays, host pathogen interaction experiments, and 3D or enhanced 2D cultures and are useful for stability and MED-ID for low turnover compounds, along with inhibition and uptake assays, just to name a few.
So now that you have an idea of which test system you need for your work, there are a few general recommendations for looking at lots to suit your work. For suspension hepatocytes, really you're just wanting to look for lots that have viability above 70%. But I do want to mention that higher post-law viability doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get higher quality cells, as the rate of death and loss of activity is highly donor dependent. And just because you start with a high post-law viability, say in the 90s, that doesn't guarantee that you'll still have reasonable uh, viability after four to six hours in culture. With suspension, generally pools are the most useful, but there are instances where individual donors are also useful. When looking at attaching hepatocytes, you'll want to confirm that they will form a good monolayer and that it will last the duration of your planned experiment. While still important, post-law viability is not as important for attaching hepatocytes because only the viable cells will contribute to the formation of the monolayer. And you'll also want to make sure that the lot that you're interested in have the availability to be played in the well format that you intend to use, as not all lots plate efficiently in all well formats. And with regards to induction assays, you'll want to look through the data sheets and pick lots that have mRNA fold induction of around six-fold or more, and at least two-fold induction in activity rates. Cells that induce lower can also be used, but cells that induce around six-fold will give you good sensitivity and you're less likely to miss induction. It is important to look at specific data sheets and pick lots that are best suited for your experiments. The right SIP activity levels, viability, yield, uptake, induction, monolayer formation, and et cetera, because not all lots are appropriate for all assays. I also want to take a moment to mention that at Sekasui Xenotech, we offer the full gamut of hepatocytes. We can offer fresh or cryopreserved cells, animal and human hepatocytes, and our most popular hepatocytes are our cryopreserved cells. We have pooled suspension and platable cells in our cryostax format. We also have genotype donors with known SNPs that lead to altered functional activity of various SIPs involved in xenobiotic metabolism. And our cryostax format is patented and is unique to Sekazui Xenotech as it offers unique advantages that are only available through the cryostax technology. We also have Hepatisure, which is a 100 donor suspension pool uh, in the traditional format. And we also offer individual human donor hepatocytes in both traditional format and individual donor cryostax format. If you are interested in more information about our cryostax cryopreserved primary hepatocyte format, we have lots of cryostax specific information on our website, and we have previously done another webinar that explains the format in more detail. I also want to mention that we have all of the hepatocyte mediums needed to successfully use our cryopreserved hepatocytes. That way, you don't have to source a medium from other places and then wonder if that medium is really optimal as our mediums have been optimized for use with our hepatocyte test systems, and we use these same mediums when characterizing our hepatocyte lots. We also have this handy little graphic to show you which mediums are needed for which test systems. Last, but certainly not least, I want to assure everyone that all of our tissues are sourced from accredited and licensed sources, along with full consent for research uh, in the instance of human tissue. We do not accept tissues that could be used uh, to save lives, and they're negative for every major animal or human pathogen, including SARS coronavirus 2. With that said, we still recommend the appropriate PPE used uh, to be used when working with these reagents. Um, and we have official statements prepared that outline how we obtain these tissues, and we're more than happy to share these with researchers to show their regulatory groups and or to send to journals to satisfy ethical requirements for publication. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have found this information useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me directly, or you can get a hold of one of our team members by calling in or using the Contact Us form on our website.